Welcome back to the Michael Gaddis Show on KCBQ AM 1170, The Answer. I am your host, Michael Gaddis of MichaelGaddis.com. I am also the CEO and NMLS license broker for Frontier Loan Group, Inc., or as we like to call it, FLG. FLG is licensed by the California Bureau of Real Estate, license number 01449152, NMLS ID number 345305. I am also licensed by the California Bureau of Real Estate as a real estate broker. My broker license number is 01433800, and my NMLS license ID is 280011. At FLG, we handle all home financing programs, but we specialize in reverse mortgages. This past weekend, FLG was at the Oceanside Harbor Days, as I mentioned a lot today, because I had a really good time at that two-day event. You guys really should go there next year um, at Street Fair in Oceanside, California. FLG, we had a booth providing reverse mortgage information to anyone curious about reverse mortgages. I learned something very interesting while attending this two-day event. What I learned is that a lot of children are very interested in reverse mortgages as a way to potentially put their parents in a better financial position. I have to admit, I was really pleasantly surprised by how many children and loved ones were curious about reverse mortgages as a means for help. I had so many people stop by my booth and just say, hey, I'm, I'm, you know, my parents have uh, mentioned this to me and I'm just curious about learning some more information. And what I think I like the most about it is that they did so with an open mind. A lot of time, there's, a, there's, there, there's so many myths and misconceptions out there regarding reverse mortgages that I'm always prepared when, when you, know, y- you know, the children come up to me that they're like, well, banks are trying to steal you know, my parents' equity or my inheritance. But you know, at, when I was at Oceanside Harbor Days, there were a lot of people coming up to me asking me questions about how they could help their parents. And I think that, you know, the fact that there's so many, uh, you know, people out there curious about how this enigmatic loan product can really help them is is really refreshing because, you know, as I said, the obstacles that usually come into place with reverse mortgages are just a lack of understanding about what the product is. And then sometimes you have children who are opposed to the fact that the parent's equity is probably going to decrease with a reverse mortgage, and that concerns them. So the fact that I got so many people out there, you know, just engaging me in conversation, talking about a lot of different things was was really refreshing to me. Now, when I was there, I also got a lot of people that were asking questions. And again, the major misconceptions were coming to life. You know, number one, the bank has title to the property. If you get a reverse mortgage, you know, my, my, my parents lose the title to the house. It becomes the bank's house. That is not true. I had to explain that many, many times. You retain, your parents retain, you or your parents retain title to the property. It's like a regular loan. It's there's no, no the the bank doesn't have the title you keep the title. The other thing that people were saying was that well when when my parents pass away or when I pass away the bank just takes the house you know and and all the equity. Now you know it's funny because when you know when I wrote for my website Frontier Loan Group I wrote uh, a lot of the frequently asked questions. Sometimes you know you look around and you try to see frequently asked questions on the internet and you say okay, well which questions does this particular company say is a frequently asked questions and which what what does this other company say? And you know it's it, it's really ironic that you know the and this is true when you say frequently asked questions these are the frequently asked questions and so no you do not lose the equity to your home when you get a reverse mortgage if you pass away and there is still equity left in the house your beneficiaries either need to pay off the loan or they can sell the home and then pay off the bank and whatever's left is theirs. There is no, uh, you know, attachment to the to the to the equity of the home. There's nothing like that, and so, but there is such a misconception out there because everybody seems to have that friend. <clears throat> and what I mean by that friend is, oh well, my friend, yeah, she got a reverse mortgage, and the bank threw her out of her house. Yeah, she didn't do anything wrong whatsoever, and and next thing you know, she she was there for ten years, and they just threw her out. They said that her she has exceeded her life expectancy. It is amazing how many stories you hear that are simply just not true. 
And that's why it's refreshing when when I'm at a you know an event like the the Oceanside Harbor Days or you know the Golden Future Expo or wherever I might be going. When I talk to somebody and they come at me with an open mind versus this you know misconceived perception of what they are and kind of look at me with disdain because they don't really understand what it is that they're talking about. And so. You know, you know, there is a lot of different things that happen with reverse mortgages. And, I, you know, as I stress to everybody, education is the key. You know, th- to me, these are simple programs because I understand them. And, but I do appreciate the fact that they can be confusing to others. But once, I think once you sit down and you really understand how a reverse mortgage works, it is rather simple. You know, basically what happens is, you know, because this is another question I was asked, well, what happens to the payments? You know, if you're not making payments on your house anymore, what happens to them? Well, what happens, it's a fully negatively amortized loan. Now, that's fancy talk for saying that your loan balance is going to go up because your payments are deferred. So but what that means is when you have a loan, you're supposed to make a payment, right? Somewhere along the line, you're charged interest. Someone has to make a payment. In a reverse mortgage the payment is added to the principal of your balance of your of your unpaid principal balance so your loan goes up so that's where the payment goes so your payment your your you or your parent doesn't have to make a payment because the loan is pay, your 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 parents equity is basically paying for it so they can stay there as long as they want so now that's the other thing that came up well what if they you know exceed their life expectancy what happens if they live longer than the lender thought they were going to live well that's then that's on the lender because the lender has a bunch of very smart people that you know basically establish what the remaining life expectancy is for every individual and that is very scary isn't it when you think about it that people are quantifying our existence by putting numbers and amount of time I mean that just kind of freaks me out when I kind of think about that you know that oh well you according to you know statistical records you have such and such time left it makes me look at the clock all the time and every time the clock ticks i'm like getting a little bit more nervous but um no it, it, it what they do is they do they have these very smart people who go up there and determine how long the average person lives and that's how they set it now if you live beyond that that's their loss basically st- st- you just beat the statistics and if you live there to be 115 years old well so be it you, they cannot kick you out of the house you can stay there until you pass away or until you vacate the home for more than one year. So let's say you have to go into the, uh, you know, um, you know, a home to, you know, a health care, extended health care, and you're unable to reside in your home for a continuously for a year. Well, at that point in time, then, you know, you could have to, you might have to sell the house because the loan could become due at that point because it has to be an owner occupied loan. So it's very important that you know that. The other thing you need to make sure you keep in mind with reverse mortgages is, and I plaster this everywhere on my website and I plaster it on all my materials, is that you, that people who have reverse mortgages have to continue to pay their principal. I mean, I'm sorry, their taxes and insurance and any ancillary costs of home ownership. So HOA, um, you know, you know, property upkeep charges. The homeowner is responsible for maintaining those. However, all principal and interest program, basically principal is non-existent. The interest gets tacked on to the principal. So it, let's give you an example. I had somebody who came to me this last week, and they had a $1,500 a month payment. They're on a fixed income. After they paid their bills every month, they had, I think it was $140 left. And that was, you know, they, that included their food. So $140 left to, basically for entertainment. So, you know, they could, you know, for gas, for, you know, going out to eat. $140 does not go very far for two people, you know, you know, 70 something years old. I mean, that's probably gas alone with the way gas prices are. So, what I'm saying is, is that you know, by doing a reverse mortgage, you can eliminate the $1,500 payment, and all of a sudden, there's a huge swing in their net disposable income. All of a sudden, their income goes from a net disposable goes from 140 to at least 1,640. Now, that's a way to live. When you you live your whole life working hard. You don't anticipate that you're going to have to, you know, pinch pennies to to go out to see a movie or to go out to dinner. What you do is you try to work hard so you can have a good quality of life. And that's what it's all about. Your golden years should be golden, not brass, not copper, not any of that. Well, that does it for today. I want to thank you all for listening to the Michael Gatta Show on AM 1170, The Answer. I am here every Wednesday night at 8 p.m. discussing anything and everything related to real estate. 
If you want to contact me with questions or topics for the show, please feel free to email me at michael at michaelgaddis.com. Contact me via Twitter at MGJD Realty. Call me at 888-242-2272. Visit my Facebook page at facebook.com slash Group, or visit my webpage at michaelgaddis.com. Again, you have been listening to The Michael Gaddis Show on AM 1170, The Answer. Good night, San Diego.